So now we've dragged out all the relevant views, text view, rating bar, and image view onto our item restaurant XML, which represents one row in our recycler view. If we run the app now, you can see that we are seeing the spacing is there, but we're not actually populating any of the data properly. The rating bar we've hard coded in 4.5, which is why you're seeing that, and none of the other data is there. So the job for this video is to fill out this data from the adapter class. So if we go into restaurants adapter, the place where we're doing all the population of the data is going to happen in the bind method of the view holder. So we have the view and we also have the restaurant data in the bind method. That's all we need. The way I'll approach this is going in order, top to bottom, and filling out all the data in our view. So right below the name of the restaurant, we have the rating bar. There's an attribute on the rating bar called rating, and we will just set that. This is a double, but the rating actually expects a float. That's what this is complaining about. So I'm just gonna call dot the to float method. Next to the rating bar is the number of reviews. We gave that an ID of TV num reviews. And then we'll set the text attribute of that to be restaurant dot num reviews. And we actually want this to be in a string. So we'll format this. Below the rating bar and reviews is the address. So the address, if you remember from our data class, it lives inside of the Yelp location. So we first need to get the location and then inside of that, there's a field called address. Below that is the category. And this is something similar. We'll First, we want to get the list of categories. And we can just take the first one and we'll grab the title of that. And then in the next column, we have two things. One, which is the distance, and then second is the price. So first we'll do the distance. We called it the ID of the text view is TV distance. And we wanna set the text. So this is where the helper method on the data class comes in handy which is the display distance. This is gonna convert it nicely into the format that we care about. Um, restaurant dot display distance. And finally, we have the price. And this is a number of dollar signs, so it's already a string. Let's try it. We haven't filled out the image view yet. We'll come to that, but let's just make sure that this is all being populated properly. Great, and you can see it is. So the only thing left to do is fill out the image view. In order to do that, Android doesn't have an easy built-in system for displaying remote images. And so we're going to use a library called Glide. If you go to your browser and just Google for CodePath Android Glide, you should come to this article. And this is usually how I am able to quickly get up and running with Glide. We need these two dependencies. So let's add these into the build.gradle file, which is located in the app module. After you paste it in, tap on Sync Now, and what that'll do is actually pull in these libraries so you can reference them in your project. Going back to the adapter, we can now start to reference Glide. So say glide.with, and we need to pass in a context, which we are getting from the constructor of the restaurant's adapter. And we're loading the image URL, that is restaurant image URL, and I'm going to load this into the image view of the item view. Let's try it. Yeah, so that almost worked. The only thing that's a bit odd is that the image is not taking up the full dimensions of the 100 by 100 image view that we've set. What we'd like is we want to change the scale type. In addition, we'd also ideally like to have routed corners on the image view. That just makes it look a little nicer. So the way you can do both of those transformations is by, again, using Glide. So I'll say apply, and we're going to add in some request options. With the transforms, and then here is where you can specify the transforms you want. So there are two that we care about, center crop, and you'll need to import this. And then second, we also want rounded corners. And this transformation takes in a parameter, which is the corner radius. So I'm going to specify 20. So if you run this now, 
you can see that looks way better. So all our images are square, rounded images, and they take up the full dimensions of the image view. A great job if you've gotten this far. As a review, what we've done is we've added in the library Retrofit into our application. And Retrofit is an easy way to interact with APIs and web services. So in our example, we're making a Yelp clone. So we're talking with the Yelp API. And in order to make that work, we pass in a base URL and we tell Retrofit to create all the details of talking to this API by passing in an interface. This interface has one method for each endpoint of the API that we're interested in. We only have one endpoint, which is searching for businesses according to a search term and location, which are the two query parameters. In addition, we need to pass in a header, which is the API key that's used for authentication. The result of this API call is a Yelp search result, which is a data class that we've defined, and that contains all the restaurant data. And one important point, important concept here is asynchronous programming because the API call may fail, may succeed, or it could take some amount of time. And so we need to make the call and then get notified back on the main thread uh, when the response has either succeeded or failed. And when it succeeded, we can parse out all the restaurants, which is being done for us by JSON, and then notifying the adapter of this new data. And then all of the logic to display one restaurant in the recycler view is happening in the adapter. So we're setting all the data here. So as usual, there's a ton of really cool extensions that you could do once you've built out this base application. For example, you could allow the user to add filters to the query to the endpoint that we have currently. For example, you could only want restaurants that are open now or only restaurants of a certain category. And second, you could update the UI to look more like Yelp. As we talked about, Yelp has branding requirements. So for example, the rating bar, you can't use the stock Android rating bar. You have to use the assets that come from Yelp. And those are all included in the documentation. If you got stuck anywhere as you were building out this project, or if you have any conceptual questions about what exactly we covered, feel free to drop a comment. I'd love to help. I hope you had a lot of fun building out this project and you feel empowered to now use any of the countless number of APIs out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.